What's up guys, Ben here, and I'm gonna get into some spoiler territory for the film yesterday. So if you haven't seen it, go away, check it out, come back, let's talk about the ending. So let's pick things up with about 20 minutes to go in the film. Jack, our main character, is stressed out of his goddamn mind because his big huge double album's about to drop and he's gonna pay the gig of his life. As part of the big launch, He's gonna play a huge gig in front of this crowd at the P Hotel in Galston, attended by Ellie and her new boyfriend. He jumps on stage and rocks out to help, which is a not so subtle reference to the existential crisis Jack's going through at this point in the film. Later on, we find Jack backstage with his roadie mate, Rocky, and Rocky comes over and informs him that uh, two people outside wanna see him, two weirdos as he puts it, and he hands Jack a yellow submarine. A yellow freaking submarine, guys. Jack knows straight away that these two guys may just be the ones that are gonna out him with his secret. He lets them in, they come over, he presumes the gig is up, and then realizes these two aren't here to scold him, but to thank him. Because these two happen to be the only other two people on the planet who have also remembered the Beatles. It just so happens they can't sing. So Jack's music is the only way for them to relive their favorite band. They then pass a little note to Jack with an address, which will hopefully lead him to a very important person. Who's this important person? Well, you would straight away presume it's one of the surviving Beatles, either Paul McCartney or Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. But it's neither of those two, because in the next scene, we see Jack drive to a small seaside cottage, knock on the door, and who opens it but Mr. John freaking Lennon played by Robert Carlyle, who you might remember as Begbie from Trainspotting. So Jack and John take a little stroll along the beach and John imparts a little bit of wisdom onto Jack. And finally, with this weight lifted off his shoulders, he hatches a plan. So in the climactic sequence of the film, Jack plays a huge gig at Wembley alongside Ed Sheeran and chooses this moment to talk to the entire world and let something off his chest. Rocky pulls Ellie out of the crowd at Wembley, puts her up on the big screen, unknowingly being filmed backstage. During Jack's speech, he finally admits his huge lie to the world. And initially, there's some booing and jeering until Jack finally admits that he'll also be giving away his music for free. We cut backstage and Rocky, sure enough, is uploading his entire album. Having won over the crowd, Jack then addresses Ellie, telling her finally, that she's the love of his life, and the two run away together into the night, finally consummating their relationship. And credits. Well, not quite. We then get a nice little montage of Jack and Ellie growing old together, living in their hometown, having a happy life as the Beatles' life goes on plays. They have children of their own who grow to love music just as much as their parents. And that is a Richard Curtis ending right there, my friends. So what did you think of the ending of yesterday? Did it live up to your expectations? Did you wish it had panned out a bit differently, perhaps? I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you nerds at the movies.